One thing I love to do is make desktop and iPhone or smartphone backgrounds. I send a set out to the Roost Tribe every month. I do a new calendar for going home to Roost readers every month. So something that I do at least twice a month and they are really fun to make and pretty easy. So I'm going to walk you through that process. The first thing I'm going to do is open a new document in Adobe Illustrator. To do that I hit Command N and I'm going to name this uh, Desktop Background. And so the uh, size of the artboard that I need to use for a desktop background, this information is pretty readily available if you just search for it online. Um, but the dimension that I like to use that tends to work for most computers is 2400 pixels by 1500 pixels. So I'm going to do the width at 2400 and the height at 1500. Uh, since this is going to probably be on the web, I'm going to change to RGB and select OK. So this is a pretty huge document and what I want to also add is an artboard for a smartphone background. So the document size I like to use for that is uh, 640 by 1135. I'll grab the rectangle tool and just drop one point to bring up the rectangle dialog box. So I'm going to make the width 640 and the height 1100 35 and select OK. So that looks about right. I uh, will add, this is just a rectangle right now, but what I need to do is convert that to an artboard. So uh, if you ever draw a square or rectangle that you need to create an artboard from, all you have to do is select the rectangle, uh, come up to Object, um, select Artboards, and Convert to Artboards. Okay, so now I have two artboards. Uh, exactly the right size that I need them to be. Next thing I need to do is just get a rectangle on top of them that is the same size as them. So with Smart Guides, I could probably just draw a rectangle, but just to be exact, I'm going to drop a point in the upper left left hand corner. And since this is remembered, uh, the last dimensions I put in, so I'm going to use that to my advantage and just do the iPhone first. So I'll drop the point here, and that's already set to go, 640 by 1135, and hit OK. This is um, a white background. I'm just going to give it a, back, a black background and uh, no stroke. So next, I'll do that with the desktop background. So M is the keyboard shortcut for the rectangle tool, and I'll drop a, a point. This was 2400 by 1500. So I'm getting there. <laughs> what I want to do now is go grab one of the patterns that we've been working on. So I am working on a nourish pattern. We'll come back to that though. I want to grab pattern from here and I think I'm going to use uh, kind of our big floral tea inspired print for this background. So I've just selected that square. I'm going to copy it by hitting command C run over here to my desktop background and paste it command V. Uh, so all I want to do is get uh, that pattern on both of these rectangles. So I'll select both of them and use the eyedropper tool. That keyboard shortcut is I and just uh, lay that pattern right on our desktop. I'm done with that square now so I can delete it. Um, this is really, really small so I want to play with increasing uh, the scale of this pattern and we're just gonna see what happens here but one thing I really like to do is uh, blow up this pattern significantly so let's blow it up like by a thousand um, and I think maybe even bigger so like 1500 percent maybe 2500 something really big um, that gives you a hint of of what is there, but it's not so obvious that it's a repeating pattern. It just looks really artful like you have kind of draped flowers um, onto the edges and when you put it, set it as a desktop background, it's going to uh, just kind of fill your screen with something floral. So I think I'm good with that percentage, but I want to work on moving these patterns around. So I'm going to uh, move them independently of each other since this one is pretty close to what might be nice and 
this one I'm going to work on a little bit. So I'll just select the rectangle, right click, transform, and move. Um, this kind of sporadically, I don't know where it got these values from, but I uh, kind of like what it's doing. So I'm going to just scroll with my mouse on this horizontal one just to see if I scroll this over a little bit, what might look best. And I'll do the same with the vertical, maybe bring this down. So I'm going to add um, a quote to this, just like I've been doing for some of the other um, slides that I've used during this course. So I want to add a quote to it. So I want some negative space that'll leave me um, somewhere to write. And I also want to be sure to put my information uh, down here at the bottom somewhere. So I just want to keep that in mind as I'm placing the pattern that there's some place to put my information so that people know who created this uh, desktop background. So I think I'm good with it about right there. I just want to move this one uh, just a little bit because I kind of like what that's doing. So I'll select it, uh, transform, and move. So it jumped it uh, to, to get it back to just what I was seeing before. I'll just take these values both back to zero. And I want to just move that down a little bit to where I lost that brown edge right there. And I'll select OK. Um, I could reduce the scale of that one just slightly to maybe 90%. Um, and then I need to move it just a little bit more one more time. So I'll move it uh, down. So you can see a little bit more of the floral aspect um, by reducing the scale.